Hello everyone, I hope you are doing fine. This is another edition of The Thesis. Once again, it's a pleasure to have you watching this very, very uh, favorite show for many of uh, my guests as well as their friends and family. And as we get set to take you to another edition, another episode of The Thesis, it's my pleasure to have somebody who has been in the field of theatre. She made a name for herself. I think she probably started uh, uh, on being on, on the theatre or on a stage even before she turned pro, should I say. <laughs> and today, joining me on the thesis, uh, to all our viewers, uh, let's welcome my youngest guest. I think the, a couple of days back I was saying, uh, I was saying youngest. But I think since you completed your PhD, we, our, our listeners, our, our viewers would know that, you know, that you are the youngest as of now. So on the show, it gives me great pleasure to have uh, Tanvi Bambolkar, Dr. Tanvi Bambolkar on, on the show. And uh, Tanvi, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Yes, it's a pleasure to have you on, on the show. And Same here. Yes. Uh, <laughs> And uh, Tanvi, uh, you have completed your PhD uh, in the field of folk music, yeah, folk, folk, folk theatre. Yeah. Yes. So, if you can tell our viewers about the your topic, the title of your doctorate. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, the topic of my uh, thesis was uh, folk theatre in Goa: a critical study of select forms. Uh, so, the forms that I chose uh, for my study were. Uh, Zagor, mm -hmm. which is a very famous folk theatre form in Goa, Kalo and uh, Ranmale. Mm -hmm. So these are a little lesser known probably than Zagor. And uh, so I did a study about these three forms and how they reflect various cultural, social and historical dimensions about Goan society. Mm -hmm. And uh, also their status, current status, how they are thriving. And what are the intentions behind doing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, behind performing these forms and how they must have started. So all that uh, was my goal and uh, that was my topic. Yes. Yeah. So it, it's nice because you've, you've just uh, used the word thriving, you know, because I think uh, a, a few years back there was not much study done into, you know, into, in, into this, uh, the folk dance and lots yeah. of this old traditional dances or even music for that matter yeah. was kind of being, uh, you know, put on the back burner and many uh, were kind of getting out yeah. of the shadows. But now yeah. you have like really uh, worked on this. So uh, tell us um, how, you know, what made you get into you know this this yeah. field of study uh, to answer the question from the beginning i think there was uh, research being done but it was very less mm -hmm. you know yeah. there were very few people who were very passionate about uh, about this topic folk about dances folk dances and, and theater like uh, to name a few, Dr. Pandrom Feldesa has mm -hmm. done a great uh, job about documenting and also analyzing mm -hmm. folk uh, lore of Goa. and T. Naik, one of the first uh, uh, PhDs in Kokni Department of mm -hmm. Goa University. So there were a very few people. Then uh, there were people outside Goa who were interested in, uh, you know, like Robert Newman, who is a famous anthropologist mm -hmm. and sociologist. He did. Uh, a bit of study of uh, you know Goan culture and society uh, but it wasn't probably out there and people didn't know uh, where to look for it yeah so now with I think uh, you know with a lot of media around mm -hmm. I think it's very easy to tell people that okay I've done this work and uh, uh, you know this is what I've found out right. and it's so interesting yes uh, Coming back to the second part of the question, how did it, mm -hmm. you know, inspire me or what motivated me? So, I was born in a family that is crazy about theatre. My father, uh, Sridhar Bambolkar, is a theatre artist mm -hmm. and uh, he is also a painter and he was also an art teacher. So, a multifaceted personality and I was, I, uh, I was born in a village called Bandura, mm -hmm. uh, a beautiful village in Ponda Tal, you must be yes, yes. <laughs> So, uh, and there were all these folk dances, uh, the Shigmo festival mm -hmm. and uh, everything, I, I grew up with mm -hmm. it. I might not have been actual part of it, but I grew up looking at all these things and it really fascinated me since the beginning and I think that made me, you know, explore it more. Yeah. 
yeah because um, i think especially in 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 ponda taluka you know the, this the folk the folk art there are a lot of folk artists who have like you know really made it a name for themselves yeah. uh, whether it's in music in art being on stage so you said you were although you were part of it you were never on stage but i'm sure you got onto stage at some point or the i other. have i have rather uh, in my school mm -hmm. again i studied in the school where my father uh, taught, taught okay. so i might be blamed for nepotism <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but i really enjoyed uh, doing it and i think i was good at it okay so uh, so, so you to, sang or danced or uh, what you no did? it was actual one act plays that okay. i part i also sang and danced but theater was you know the main thing okay. and uh, we participated in kala academies one act plays and uh, that's where my journey uh, with theater began with theater yeah yes so uh, now since we've already put press the rewind <laughs> button i think let let's go back in time your yeah. school uh, school days college days can you th take us through that you know your family as well yeah it has been a wonderful journey when yeah. i look back as i told you i was born in bandora and then you know i mean it's nature and culture and uh, i did my schooling there and then uh, i did my college in dempe college miramar which was like a different uh, side of goa altogether yes. <laughs> uh, but i did find great teachers i must okay. say uh, ma'am was Uh, I think yes. you yes, uh, interviewed her recently, well, yes. so she was one of my teachers, and she's a you know she's a theatre enthusiast, and I was uh, mesmerized and amazed and inspired by teachers like her. Okay. And further, at Goa University, uh, when I did my MA in English okay. from English department, uh, we had wonderful. Uh, professors like professor dr kiran budkule who was also my guide for the mm -hmm. thesis then uh, dr rafael fernandez dr bhart uh, professor nina kaldiara mm -hmm. so these were amazing teachers who you know i think shaped the kind of uh, people me and my peers were and we, they made us realize that we have this amazing land called goa and we need to explore it more and we mm -hmm. need to tell people that you know there's so much more to it than what what is uh, just shown what is just shown or yeah. yes in the media because i mean uh, everybody knows about goa like you know you can come just you know just to have fun but there's much it's goa yes. has lots of things yes. that you can and for you especially when since you were coming from 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 a sleepy village i, I don't know actually <laughs> if i should say sleepy village and then uh, your journey coming to panjim must over Oh, what 15 17 years you traveled yes, for studies yes then they a nice 45 minutes of journey in yeah. the bus <laughs> more uh, than I, that I, actually yeah, more than that <laughs> yeah. i'm sure you you had lots of thoughts you know that's one one part of your phase when especially when you're traveling that you can you yes. know sit back and think about many things definitely it gave me a lot of time to mm -hmm. uh, also read sometimes mm -hmm. and uh, think also write it uh, it may surprise a lot of people but i used to write in buses in bus. while traveling from dempes or university uh, you are not blamed for bad handwriting <laughs> that i am <laughs> no but, i'm joking <laughs> yeah. but i don't regret it i think okay. it really uh, shaped me again as mm -hmm. a person and uh, i think somewhere all these experiences somehow motivated me to you know take up a field that's uh that's very close to my heart mm -hmm. and that's why probably i could do it really well so okay. i think because i loved it i i did it quickly and you know yeah with all with you had the force yeah. so you finished your ma and directly you decided so i'm i am going to do my phd i, I think uh, uh this is a confession but i really stumbled into research okay. frankly speaking mm -hmm. because uh, i was very innocent and naive uh, yeah. there was a bit of uh, you know research that we used to do at ma level mm -hmm. like presenting papers and mm -hmm. all that but it was not hardcore research like what you need for phd mm -hmm. so uh, i had uh, sent out my research proposal for mphil to another university and then it didn't get through so many suggested that why don't you try at goa university you know just for the yeah trial, since you're doing not this. even serious so about so who it. was who who was uh, like, uh, uh, telling you to egg on your like your my, lecturers my or, father okay. uh, then also yeah my lecturers even uh, i uh, had good friends like uh, uh, palia gaonkar she is mm -hmm. also finishing her phd now i'm very excited because we registered together okay. and we are like i still remember we are at the interview and we are making fun and you know there are senior people who have applied for the phd where we are going to get yes, it yes. and you know we are chilling there yes. 
but i think we had good research proposals the topics were good so the panel really liked it mm -hmm. of course they grilled me also they uh, asked me how would i justify we mm -hmm. wanted be just the documentation right. because there has been documentation of folklore, folklore. or folk theater mm -hmm. so i had to justify how i'm going to go beyond mm -hmm. documentation so i did that and mm -hmm. then uh, professor dr budkule kiran budkule was kind enough to take me as her uh, disciple she mm -hmm. was my guide uh, and um, i'm i'm so grateful for for the kind of contribution she's done mm -hmm. uh, she's given towards the completion of my thesis thesis yeah. what was the the study that you had to go through like you know uh, so uh, basically first of all there was very less material which was available mm -hmm. written material yeah, right. to you know mm -hmm. go uh, so i had to actually do a lot of field study mm -hmm. and a lot of field work it so was so you met a lot of artists i met a lot of artists then all these folk theater performances they used to happen at night mm -hmm. uh i mean they still happen at yes. night uh, traditionally like they started around 11 o'clock mm -hmm. and then uh, early morning by 6 they they finish it so i used to travel to these uh, you know remote villages of satari then many villages in ponda and kankon mm -hmm. or uh, to watch this uh, these performances record them mm -hmm. i think and you've documented some for your thesis as e well right yes yeah. uh, there are some photographs mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and i'm so glad that i didn't never had to do this alone mm -hmm. i didn't know driving then so <laughs> so my father would accompany me my brother my sister in law at mm -hmm. times i had very good friends my uh, then uh, friend and now husband rishikesh he would accompany me mm -hmm. probably one way to sort of impress yes. but that really <laughs> worked out so uh, that was fun you know the research work the the field work basically mm -hmm. going there seeing how the performance actually happens and mm -hmm. pre performance things like you know how uh, males get ready as females mm -hmm. characters you know dress up dress. in sari mm -hmm. and and that was that was beautiful process mm. but uh, i i like to interrupt you since you said about males who dress up as mm. females is that because there's a shortage of uh, no, no, ladies no. or they are not allowed to uh, be on, uh, on stage or most of the folk theater forms mm. uh, in goa mm. are male uh, oriented okay but there are a lot of female characters mm -hmm. that's the in interesting part this could be one because uh, you know traditionally it has been like that that males were the performers and females were not supposed to uh, secondly it could be also because of the certain social taboos mm -hmm. which are associated like related to menstruation mm -hmm. and all that which are still being practiced uh, so um, but it still goes on and but it's very interesting that in spite of these uh, these forms being very uh, gender exclusive they do not forget to talk about the women yeah. the other gender that exist in society they too there are female characters they talk about their plight mm -hmm. you know how there is some character who talks about her husband who has become a drunkard mm -hmm. and so Uh, but a male is doing that right. role so that is very very interesting yes it's very interesting yeah. uh you've uh, done your study like you said in three different uh, folk, form, folk forms no right yeah. so if you could uh, tell our viewers about the different the three different folk forms and you know what it is yeah so zagor uh, is a folk theater form uh, which can be translated as vigil okay mm -hmm. so to stay as awake as the name says yeah. yeah to stay awake throughout the night uh it usually happens in the month of may mm -hmm. okay only it happens uh in shivoli uh the the village in north goa mm -hmm. it only happens there after uh, next monday after christmas okay okay and the unique feature of shivoli zagor is that it is celebrated by hindus and catholics together mm -hmm. so it showcases the religious harmony mm -hmm. and uh, syncretic nature of goan culture uh then ranmale is uh, before you go ahead yeah. for for the zagor i mean your ranmale yeah. about zagor uh, what uh, what is the uh, should we say the need for 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 doing that or uh, i mean to stay awake the whole night you know uh, so it's like um, it's a post harvest uh, festival okay so uh, you know probably to protect the in the olden mm -hmm. times of course to protect the harvest they wanted some kind of motivation to mm -hmm. stay away to stay away and this could have been one reason why it started and in today's times i think this folk theater forms are sustaining because of the faith that people have in mm -hmm. uh, you know practice mm -hmm. 
practicing them mm -hmm. because we still have agrarian societies in yeah. Goa who really believe in the and there is also worship of nature mm -hmm. if you listen to invocations of these forms there is Dhartari Mata there is mm -hmm. Mother Earth so. and you know revering mm -hmm. the uh, the the living things around mm -hmm. us so I think that is so beautiful yeah. and what we need to learn in today's times right. yeah. but are the young this younger generation are they like taking up yes uh, yes yes definitely. there is participation definitely yeah. rather i see there's more excitement because now uh, you know people go to these zagors and kalo and they go alive on instagram right. so there's that excitement to show what my village has got to okay. offer okay. so i think with social media it's becoming more uh, yeah, trendy, trendy yes. and i'm glad that it's yeah it's, it is because it's it, i mean otherwise these art forms are going to die yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. they're going to go out i don't think they are going to die because you know they've survived for so many centuries mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. even years okay uh, you can make out because of the influences that they have they have had influence of uh, the islam uh, mm -hmm. Oh, Islamic influences that we had mm -hmm. on Goa, they have had influence of Kadamba mm -hmm. uh, 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 ki kingdom, yeah. then they have influence of Portuguese rule which was mm -hmm. for like for, for, for 50 years. So it, but there it has have, yeah, all and this. still it has survived. So I think it's the beauty of the, the form that uh, and why they survive, maybe because uh, there is no rigidity, mm -hmm. they keep on changing. You know, they've, they've been very flexible and I think that's adapting the reason, to, yeah, yeah, adapting to the contemporary times. Fantastic. Yeah. So that's uh, about Zagor. Well, uh, it's good that you all are still Zage and uh, watching this program, the thesis. Uh, it's of course a great pleasure to have uh, so many different views about uh, the study that has been done, whether it's in, in history, it's in, it's in literature, it's uh, in sciences music and today of course uh, we have uh, Dr. Tanvi Bambolkar here telling us about uh, her field of study and what she has so much passion about. So it's the, the folk art, the folk theatre. Uh, Tanvi, you were telling me about your second, the second form of yes. you know, folk. Yes, so that is Ranmale, yeah. uh, which is uh, performed mostly in Satri Taluka. Mm -hmm. You won't find this form in any other mm -hmm. uh, Taluka, or maximum Sange, but mostly in Satri Taluka, what mm -hmm. I have documented and studied. Mm -hmm. uh, it is more or less similar to the other form that I studied, Kalo, mm -hmm. where there is, you know, there's so much, uh, a lot of satire that is involved, mm -hmm. like there is jokes about certain communities and everyone is, is okay. fine with yeah, it. With Nobody it, yes. takes offense. That's mm -hmm. the best part about folk theatre forms, uh, you know, and uh, so it is a very region specific folk mm -hmm. theatre form and the third form is Kalo which I think you will find in most of the temples mm -hmm. around uh, Goa uh, around it happens around in November Kalo uh, that is the season for Kalo. Okay. So for this Ranmala you uh, it, it's a it's it's a dance it's a drama, dance, right? yeah, and drama. they also uh, have like a script to that that uh, uh, yeah or uh, and they, one very specific feature of Ranmala is they have a human curtain. Okay. Uh, they stand throughout the performance mm -hmm. uh, behind, like if this is a performing area, they'll stand behind. Okay. And uh, they they are like chorus basically right. and they okay. narrate the stories okay. and then there are different characters. There are two kinds of characters in Ranmala, mm -hmm. Songa and Dhonga. Mm -hmm. So one is based on mythological mm -hmm. characters and Dhonga is basically you know, Just the normal characters that we see like yeah, yeah. Barber and uh, Potter, mm -hmm. uh, some old women played by men again. Okay. So they come and they have fun. And there's also certain uh, preaching also that's that's done, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, telling about the society or telling about the social evils mm -hmm. which are, uh, which existed or are existing uh, today like alcoholism mm -hmm. and, you know, they, they comment about this. And uh, when I recently went to, uh, I still go to watch these performances to see how they are evolving. And I recently realized that uh, they are adapting even the contemporary issues that are happening. Mm -hmm. Like, say, they will talk about tigers in mm -hmm. Satri mm -hmm. and, you know, um, IIT mm -hmm. issues. So, uh, that also they are bringing into that content. So, you asked me about the script. Right, right. So, there is a structure, but they, it keeps on uh, yeah. amalgamating new to elements. Into newer, it. Yes. yes, yes. And... Uh, Dalo, you said this is the third form. Kalo. 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 Yeah, yeah. So, Kalo is uh, again, uh, it uh, in some of uh, the parts of Maharashtra also there is Dashautari mm -hmm. uh, 
Kalo. So it is pretty similar to that. Uh, but a very interesting character that uh, that is there in Kalo folk theatre form is uh, Shankasur. Mm -hmm. So he is a character who is like a rebel, you know, wearing black uh, dress with a mask. And you know, he comes uh, fr from nowhere suddenly in the audience. And then he'll just pick up children from audience, play with them, scare them, then put some riddles to the, uh, to the main narrator who's there. And you know, create a havoc basically. But uh, I think a lot of people just go to watch Kalo just to see what Shankasur is going to do. But he also, I think, symbolizes a sort of rebellion mm -hmm. against the structure uh, which is laid in the society. So I think that is very interesting. So these are the, some of the interesting things that I, I found in this. There are many more, but I could just encapsulate these for you. <laughs> right. So uh, right now, if at all I am with Tona to Kare paint, mm, I will look yes. like a Kalo. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and you will have to pick some leaves and, leaves you know, and, dance, and, around, and dance around. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, uh, Tanvi, now uh, you have taken us to such a wonderful, um, you know, experience that you have had going through your doctorate, uh, completing uh, your thesis and writing it. Uh, any hardships that uh, you had? I uh, mean, apart from saying you had to find, go, sp spend a lot of sleepless I, nights. I think uh, doing the research, I mean, the field work was not at all the difficult part. Mm -hmm. I think the I think most of the other people who've done uh, their uh, doctorate will agree that the most difficult part is writing the thesis, because uh, you have a lot of things in your mind, mm -hmm. uh, you have a lot of things on your phone, but you know actually putting them onto your screen mm -hmm. because now we type everything, so that is the most difficult part. You know, so and your are, husband help you to type? Uh, not to type, but he proofread my <laughs> thesis at the end. Uh, but uh, that is the biggest challenge I mm -hmm. feel, and I, I still have almost two f folders with drafts and drafts of all the chapters. Mm -hmm. Like my guide would, she would make changes, changes and send, and I would make changes and send. And so I think that's the most challenging part. Mm -hmm. Uh, but ultimately, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. I think it's ultimately, it's uh, you realize that you've done something that that you know you've contributed to the field of knowledge, mm -hmm. and you did something that you really enjoyed. Enjoyed, doing. Yeah. yes, exactly. And I think it it was it's a topic that was so close to your heart. Very much, yeah. I think that's the reason I enjoyed doing it. Otherwise, I am not a person who will you know sit throughout the night and write something. I have not mm. been a studious kid also. <laughs> but uh, but for this, I did have to, you know, stay up till morning. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to spend certain sleepless nights. Another challenge was I was also teaching during the, the same phase mm -hmm. uh, on lecture basis in some of the colleges. Uh, so then I at some point I realized that, you know, it's not going to happen because both the research and teaching it demands a lot from you. Mm -hmm. And I was I was also at uh, All India Radio as right. news reader, so it was too much at some point. Mm -hmm. So I had to take a break from teaching for a year just to write my thesis. So I did that, and uh, I think that's why I could write it sooner and be mm -hmm. done with it. Yeah. So now, since uh, you've completed at at a, at an early age, is uh, in the pipeline anything for the studies? Uh, a double doctor. <laughs> I asked this to another. Of yes, my I would love to since I have. Time, yes. I think, <laughs> uh, but not so soon. Mm -hmm. I I think you require a certain amount of uh, maturity, yeah. intellectually, mm -hmm. academically, and uh, you also require uh, the criteria is you need to publish certain amount of papers. So mm -hmm. I would like to work towards that right mm -hmm. now. I'm working towards that. All right. Uh, but I don't want to leave my core topic. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to do something maybe related, closely associated with the topic that that I have worked on because it, it, now I think that topic has just become part of my life mm -hmm. and even when I go out say outside Goa and I see some folk performance and I get really fascinated and I try to mm -hmm. find out more about it so uh, uh, yes I, I and I'm also I also did after my PhD I, I did one uh, project on Kalo of Pahingini mm -hmm. uh, village of Kankon so I've been doing this documentation I've been do, writing papers about 
folklore of Goa and maybe a postdoc in future. Let's see. Fantastic. <laughs> um, uh, earlier when we were discussing off air that you were, you were saying about, um, you know, uh, I was asking you about how easy or difficult it is to have guides, you know, because there's a criteria you need to have yeah. lots of uh, publications in your name. Yeah. So... Uh, to be guide. To now. be a guide, yeah. yes. Yes, uh, you need to have a certain uh, three publications and especially in Scopus mm -hmm. and uh, you need to pa be part of a research center, especially mm -hmm. if you're teaching in any of the colleges mm -hmm. and you need to have certain amount of experience okay. uh, of teaching and then you can apply for guideship, then they will scrutinize your application and then uh, give you the guideship. But I think we need more, especially in English department, I think we need more people mm -hmm. uh, to be guides mm -hmm. so that I think those who are really genuinely interested in research can uh, can be guided and, uh, you know, we only expand the field of knowledge. Yeah. So, we, we probably in another eight, eight years, we'll see you as a guide. I, I hope so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, it's been amazing uh, talking to you Same and here. learning about uh, <laughs> some really wonderful art forms. You know, we I've, I've read about it, but uh, it's going to be there for our viewers to watch and see. Yeah. And especially when it comes to a young person like you, you know, because it, it inspires um, the others, you know, who because they say, oh, we can do it and we, you know, to go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much for, you know, giving me this opportunity because it's very rare that... Uh, you know, someone was done PhDs, interviewed or something like that. So uh, I'm really happy for doing this. And yes, as you said, I hope more young people realize the value of research and they come uh, into the field of research and research about the things that matter. Yes, yeah. because uh, I think like how you said, like it matters and there are sometimes uh, an issue that or, or a topic that is so close to your heart and then and if you can, you know, give it your go, uh, there's something to that you can always learn from it and not Definitely. only for yourself, but even for, for, for generations yeah. to come and yeah. it's always going to be there. Yeah. So thank you so much, uh, Tanvi, for your time. My and uh, of course, it's always a pleasure to have young talent, uh, youngsters on the show on uh, this uh, lovely edition of the thesis on CCR TV that we have on cable network as well as on YouTube channel. It's uh, of course my pleasure to have many of you all join us here. So if you have any of your friends or family who would like to uh, be part of the show, who have of course done a doctorate, yes, you can always uh, get in touch with us at CCR. Oh, there are many. Yes. <laughs> so then we don't forget to uh, send me a, uh, your friend's number as soon yes. as she's done her, with her yes, PhD. Yes, <laughs> Fantastic. So there you are, Tanvi. Okay. So um, as it's time for me to say goodbye to you, wishing you all the very best. Uh, and of course, uh, with the hope that we're going to see you surely someday somewhere on CCR TV. This is your host Pambino along with uh, Tanvi. We say bye-bye to you guys. See you.